You know that Rabin was not only Israel's prime minister, he was a long-standing personal friend. And on the night of the rally, we were waiting in the house of Ido Disenchik, then editor of Mariv, for a party for my wife, Marty, and me before our departure as ambassador to France. And we were all waiting there. And suddenly we heard the beepers, you know, there were still beepers, then no phones, of Eitan Haber, who was his chief of staff, and Dr. Barabash, the famous Dr. Barabash, who was then the uh, director of Ichilov, running, and suddenly someone shouted, they have shot Rabin, they have shot Rabin. And, so, and they went out running. And we opened the television, and for 15 minutes there was nothing. So we said, maybe it's a false alarm. And then, after 20 minutes, 25 minutes, came the announcement, the tragic announcement of the death of Rabin. So this is a day for me, not only of national remembrance for Rabin, but also personal remembrance for Leah and Yitzhak Rabin, my very good and trusted friends. And I want to note, uh, Avi, Mr. Ambassador, that you served as a personal advisor to Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir at the total other end of the political divide uh, of Yitzhak Rabin, and yet you had that relationship with him. And I have to wonder if, unfortunately, now we're hearing today, if, if since Rabin's assassination, the divides in Israel have, be have instead of healing or, or the gaps closing, uh, they've only gone greater in many different ways than they did uh, back then. You're absolutely right. In those times, uh, we were civil servants. I mean, we served the government, we, whether it was from the right, from the left, or from the center. And ministers were ministers who served the country. Today, everything has become so political. And we had today the demonstration at the Knesset. And it centers around the most terrible political tragedy in Israel, the assassination of a prime minister. Instead of uniting the country, he has divided the country. And one must say with great sadness that the murderer has succeeded in changing the political and diplomatic history of Israel. We must admit it. And today we reap the fruits of this awful act. And I was sorry to see in the Knesset this debate. I think that for Rabin, we should have a more dignified debate about values of democracy, about Rabin's legacy in peacemaking or being a general, instead of having this political struggle. Right, it seemed, it, 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 it seemed the, this, the, that debate can be held another time, but it seemed as if to, on a day like today, maybe it's not the most appropriate moment for this kind of... Uh... Absolutely right, but you know when it started, until Netanyahu became prime minister, then the family of Rabin decided that they didn't want to have him at, with them at the ceremony, at the private ceremony. Yes, on uh, Mount Herzl, the, uh, the great You know, side. and so they didn't salute each other, they didn't speak to each other. So it brought about this divide. And today we have heard the family of Rabin, I think his grandson, uh, saying uh, a very difficult political thing. And we have heard others uh, from the right. And again, I say, we should, we, we should see that as an event to teach us to love, to unite, not to let politics divide us and hatred form itself in our midst. This is not the purpose of commemorating Rabin. It should be completely different. This should be a show of unity, of democracy, of right. love, not the scene we've seen at the Knesset. Well, maybe one future anniversary, uh, we'll, we'll get to that point. Ambassador Avi Pazner, thank you for joining us. Thank